Winston Edmondson here with Studio B with Jason Mendenhall from Switch. You know, here at EMC World, there's a lot of talk about transformation, and a lot of that transformation requires uh, server space. It requires uh, data centers. So we're going to talk about Switch and uh, educate me. Tell me a little bit about what you guys do. So we uh, Switch builds the world's most powerful technology data center ecosystem. And a lot of folks go, well, what does that mean? I mean, ecosystem's been throwing around, been being thrown around a lot in the technology community about what's happening out there. But really what it boils down to is when you think about applications today, they run on operating systems that travel over networks, that land on servers and storage that's sitting somewhere, right? As, as virtual as all this seems to us, there's a physical part of it that has to be taken care of. And Switch does that better than anyone else. We've built the world's best data center, and we challenge anyone to come by and prove us wrong. Uh, we're going to hold that moniker until someone does. And then we'll take it off the website. But until then, we're, we're putting it out there. Um, it starts there, and then we layer in the, the really one of the most advanced telecommunications networks. Uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, Enron built a unique facility here in Las Vegas. It was a broadband peering arbitrage data center. They brought all this connectivity into a single facility, and their goal was to trade bandwidth between the carriers using um, the same algorithms they were using to trade power. Well, uh, we all know we have an Enron. Uh, our CEO and founder, Rob Roy, acquired that facility out of Enron's bankruptcy. And when we did that, um, we created a unique uh, advanced carrier neutral environment with over 32 carriers or carrier networks. And um, we made it possible for our customers to share their combined buying power as we go out and buy connectivity. So it's producing savings of 40 to 60% for them. So world-class data center infrastructure, world-class connectivity, and then layer on top of it a very uh, uh, innovative cloud ecosystem. Over the past three and a half years, we've been aggregating the top cloud providers from the world in our environment. So customers can deploy private infrastructure in the data center and then easily cross-connect to any one of those clouds in there. So when you think about all the tool sets required to transform your company, a place to put the, the stuff you've been doing, a place that can handle the stuff you're going to do, connectivity to be able to make it happen, and then all the innovations occurring around you so that you can leverage those going forward. You know, a year and a half ago, uh, Pat Gelsinger and, and I, we put together the EMC Greenplum Apache Workbench. It's a 24 petabyte workbench that's in our data center that's just available for testing Hadoop at scale. And those are the types of things that are going on in there because it's not just about customers having their private infrastructure, but you really want to put yourself on a monorail to the future and we, we actually can help them future-proof their decisions because of the ecosystem we've built. Now you talked about uh, the, the physical aspect. We are talking about virtual and cloud, but you're right, the physical aspect uh, and, and the physical security, uh, something I read and I want you to make, want to make sure this is true, uh, part of the appeal of Las Vegas for your data center has to do with the safety of the region. Tell me a little bit about the natural disaster. So when you look at, uh, when you look at things that can impact a data center, right, uh, earthquakes, hurricanes, tsunamis, wildfires, you know, all of those types of things that can impact a data center. Uh, and there's eight to ten of them. None of them occur in Las Vegas. It's actually the only metropolitan market in the country that has a zero rating for natural disasters. It's immune. <laughs> Somehow. So, yeah, it, yeah it, it has to do with the mountains and the geo where it's placed. Now, there's a lot of unnatural disasters that happen in Las Vegas, and some of them probably happened last night with the crew that's here at EMC World. But, um, no, it, it's the safest city in America, and that makes it a really and we, we build our environment. I mean, it's a 2.2 million square foot tech data center campus. So we're going to build out to 2.2 million square feet of data center space. So think about that. Now, all that has to be physically secure. We've got a military trained security team that, 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 that uh, protects that environment 24 7 for our customers that are enterprise, healthcare, uh, financial services, government. Uh, big tech, cloud services, you name it, uh, a, a unique ecosystem of over 500 customers all operating in that environment. Tell me about the, the data center itself. Tell me, uh, kind of describe it for me, because I'm, as I understand it, the tours you give are almost like uh, amusement park uh, rides as you, as you go through, but uh, it, it sounds impressive. Des describe for my audience what, uh, what it's like to walk into the doors at, uh, at your location. That's an interesting question. No one's ever really asked me that before, but it's safe to say that uh, when, when people are done with the tour, they go, that was like technology Disneyland. And most people come in going, a data center, a physical piece of, uh, uh, you know, a physical infrastructure can't be that interesting. But what happens is when you come through and you see what we're doing from a physical standpoint and how that translates into the decisions that CIOs and CTOs are faced with, what they see is an innovation environment. 
something extremely unique where all the tools necessary for them to grow their enterprise and to do business with other businesses are all there together. It's an extremely powerful tool and for people that come through it and, and experience the physical security, the innovations that occur in the data center from a heating and cooling standpoint where, you know, Rob Roy, our CEO, he is 10 to 15 years ahead of his time when it comes to data center design. And people come through and they see that and they go, this is amazing, the physical infrastructure. But the game changer is the ecosystem that's present there and all the tools that are that exist. You know, sometimes I'm surprised at the uh, CIOs and the, the heads of companies from industries that you would think would have already been on this path of transformation, but they're not. Talk to some of the CI CIOs. Uh, what what industries do you think are, are uh, should really look at some of the sol solutions that your company offers? I, I don't think there's a single industry that shouldn't be looking at it. Um, it if you're if you're in any space where you're looking to change the way that you look at the future and change the way you do business today, then looking at Switch is the right place to be for all the reasons we talked about. You know, Paul Moritz, when he came through the data center, he kind of said the same thing. He's like, if a company isn't here and taking advantage of what's going on in this ecosystem, how are they going to get from point A to point B with the things that are happening, not, not tomorrow, but three years down the road and five years down the road. And how are they even managing the environments that they're building out today, you know? In many cases, uh, a lot of people talk about the visit to our data center being a game-changing experience. We had one leader who came through and said, look, we designed solutions for the world that we know. Switch sold us a world we didn't know. And that's the type of thing we're talking about. And that's why people have such a, almost a visceral experience when they come through the data center tour, because it is more than just the physical infrastructure. It's kind of this roadmap of where things are going and future-proofing those decisions. It's like the allegory of the cave. Once they, uh, once they see the real world, they can't go back. Uh, tell me about um, some, some success stories, some, some cases that uh, people have come in and, and as you said, been able to transform and, and really experience uh, phenomenal growth. Uh, one of our customers is, is already a big enterprise, and, and, and uh, I won't get into their name, at least on this format, but if you come to the data center, you'll find out who they are. Uh, but they were faced with a challenge around big data and innovation in the big data space, and, and big data for them is their data, not let me go out and mine other people's data. And when you think about how that's taking place in the enterprise, the combination of compute and storage that needs to occur in order for that to happen, it can be at scale. And they've been able to build a 96 petabyte data warehouse in our environment that has a 20 petabyte Hadoop cluster tied to it. And they're doing analytics that were never possible because their data and their compute actually sit next to each other. And they're able to build it out at scale without worrying about it. You know, no one wants to show up and find out that Hurricane Guelda scattered your gear from Arkansas to Oklahoma, right? You want to be in a safe place, you got to have the connectivity to get to it, and you got to have an environment that's going to support the storage at scale and the compute at scale. Who do you guys compete with and, and how do you differentiate? It sounds like just the, the sheer magnitude of what you have is a, a differ, differentiator, but uh, what, how, what other ways do you differentiate? I, I think it's not just the magnitude, because interestingly enough, you know, in the, in the data center space, there's a lot of people that like to talk about size of the data center. Um, in, you know, here's the facts. You could have a million square foot data center, but if you only have 20 megawatts of UPS or 20 megawatts of power to it, what you have is a 20 megawatt data center and 800,000 square feet of warehouse space, right? With everything that we do, the innovations in the data center, as big as we are, our limiting factor is actually our square footage at 2.2 million square foot. We have the cooling, the power, the UPS, the, the scale to be able to deliver all the solutions in that environment. So from that perspective, there isn't anybody who's even close to us uh, uh, from a competitive standpoint. It's just, they're not close. Our designs exceed the, you know, the Uptime Institute's come out with their tier rating, tier four, uh, tier three, tier two, tier one. We meet or exceed every tier four requirement. So on that side, we, we hit all the checkbox for all of our customers. The difference maker for them, though, is this ecosystem that's been evolving for 10 to 12 years, and there isn't anybody who's capable of doing that. And because we've been able to evolve that from connectivity to cloud to big data to uh, programming to applications to what's next and those types of environments, customers feel comfortable that the innovations are occurring on around them, and then we put them on those roadmaps. I'm glad you said that. You know, in this industry, if you stand still, you'll get left behind. What does the future hold? What what can we expect? What are we what are we seeing in, in the ways of uh, evolving and, and going even further? I, you know, that's an interesting question and one that we've uh, we put a lot of thought into. 
So I would say stay tuned because uh, we're working on some things that are really unique in that space. But we're s what's what's happening right now. I see is when you look at cloud and big data enterprises are we're still at the very beginning stages of this. You know, I talked about this at a Peer Insight uh, review with the Wikibon guys. All as big as cloud is right now, as big as big data is, as much as it's talked about, the the enterprises have not adopted. You know, we've got 42 different cloud providers in our data center. They're all still babies, <laughs> I mean, relatively speaking, right. in the enterprise world. And you talk to them, and, and what you find out is that in this early adoption, what we've got is almost like a dumbbell. We've got a lot of, on the small side, we've got a lot of little companies doing a lot of little things. And on the big side, we have very few companies doing a lot. And then in the middle, there's this skinny line where not everybody's really adopted yet. That's the part that's going to come next. And so the way I see it is that over the next three to four years, we're going to see people embracing these new tech, these technologies that are actually here, that have been proven out, and they're going to try and figure out how to incorporate it into their normal operations to take full advantage of it. We've had a lot of conversations, and it seems like once people uh, experience, if, if they just kind of get their feet wet, they'll realize, wow, look at all the benefits. So uh, for folks that are tuning in and uh, have, have been convinced this is something I need to do, what's the best way to get in touch with you guys or, or uh, kind of just start off? How, how do they start the process and, and who do they call? So go to www.switchlv.com. So that's Switch LV like Las Vegas. And uh, there's a contact us. You can click there and just say, hey, I would love to talk to somebody about how Switch can help, whether it's cloud or connectivity or data center services. You can also reach me. Uh, uh, my Twitter address is at Jason Mendenhall. That's uh, J-A-S-O-N-M-E-N-D-E-N-H-A-L-L. Uh, and you can reach me there, and I'll put you in touch with the right folks that can help. Uh, that's the best way to do it. Jason, fantastic information. Uh, the next time we chat, maybe we can do it live from the data center itself. Is that, can we arrange that? I think so. That would be doable. Fantastic. Absolutely. Winston Edmondson, Studio B, signing out.